And then finally, when everything's done over here, I walked over, you know, <laughs> underneath the lights, they're doing the test and same thing. I put my hand out, held his hand and he just started smiling like, and I'm just like, oh my God, I have a son, I have a kid. <laughs> this is like everything that I've dreamt about, how you would look, reaction, everything is like in front of me. And I just, I didn't know how to explain. I was overjoyed, man. I, I sat there, I stood there and just kept staring at him. What I had to learn was like, hey, there's some shit that you can feel and mm -hmm. there's some shit that you can say. Mm -hmm. For you to say that shit out loud is wild. Right. But like, we can all feel like, first of all, with our kids, we all feel like we first line of defense. Like if something mm -hmm. go wrong, you think, <laughs> you think I got bail money at Vlad's crib for, for fun? It's happening. <laughs> You know what I'm saying it's not it's not just there for light work, but yeah. like we can both feel that way, but we both have to exactly what Alice said. We both have to communicate. Like there is no reason for you to have left that doctor's appointment mm -hmm. to go not pick up Ramsey's because he right. already got picked up. Right. Because now right. you're putting yourself in jeopardy. Yeah. Rachel, I'd have looked at you crazy. Like, what are you doing here? Go back to your appointment. Oh wait, now you done lost an appointment. Now you got to make another appointment. Now I got to take a day off because you want to be goofy. Like, well, well, in in my in my defense, guys, it was for carpal tunnel. Like I wasn't dying in the hospital. I, it was carpal tunnel appointment, but he, he did. And like he and I knew he was going to pick him up. I think it was just my line of me being the first line of defense. And Safan, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna bring it to you, but I do want to clarify. I do feel like, like Ella said, it is a communication thing, and I think a lot of moms, especially you know, us stubborn um, alpha females, we don't want to ask for the help. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. After Stefan goes, I want to ask we gotta get into why. That. Okay. Yeah, go, go, go ahead, Stefan. No, 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 no. Well, we said we're going to let Stefan talk. <laughs> no, no, I want to uh, let Stefan talk because I want to know why. And it's like, especially when we've been with y'all through y'all's bad times and worst times, it's like, we're here to love you and help you. So mm -hmm. why deny us the thing that we're here to do for y'all? I don't know, but you're going to you put that pin in it. Remember that thought. Go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't like it, but I understand where you're coming from with that, you know, mama bear and that's her cub and she wants to protect them. But at the same time, I would see more if it was like a baby daddy thing mm -hmm. where you, know, you guys mm -hmm. are not living together, you're living right. apart. But you're living in the same home, you're married, you know this man cares wholeheartedly, and he's right here, and instead of saying, I need help, you're doing it by yourself. And this is where sometimes I think women, they over-exceed and overdo do certain things, and they're like, well, you didn't help me. And I'm like, you never ask for help. You know I'm here. You didn't ask me for my help. And you're upset at me for not offering help because you didn't ask for my help. Like, I can't read your minds. I can't do this. So a lot of times I'll have to like- Close, like, like, close mouth, yell. don't get fed. Mm. <laughs> exactly. So that's where I look at it in that sense. Like, okay, hey, you text me. Hey, I'm an appointment. He's sick. All right, bet. I'm going to leave wherever I'm at. I don't care if I was working. If yeah. I know I'm closer to my son, I'm leaving work to go pick him up and go grab him. You don't have to leave work. You don't have to always be the one leaving work. Yeah. Like, someone was sick, got COVID. I was like, you know what? I got the time. You work. I'll go ahead. I'll take the freaking week off. I'll watch him. No problem at all. He doesn't have to go babysit. I'll stay with him and everything like that. I got the time off. Why not? Doesn't always have to be. You're the one that has to watch him when he's sick. You're the one that has to do all these things um, with that as a woman. But yeah, man, y'all, you guys got to chill out. <laughs> Because, Rachel, Rachel, why did y'all marry us in the first place? Like, oh. Well, I I will say, and, and I don't want to speak for every woman, but we look, and a lot of us, granted, we are living in 2022, soon to be 23, and we try to create a modern role in, in the woman's life, and we're in the mom life. But a lot of us are were raised old school. A lot of us were raised... You know, with with looking at the mom as the caregiver of the house. So, you know, I, I know I, well, I'm talking about women. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about women. No, no, <laughs> or, no. 
I was, I was, I raised my hand because I'm a child and I was like, I have something to say to that. But okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, a lot of alpha females were raised with the mindset of, I am the one that's supposed to take care of my family. I'm the one that's supposed to nurture my family. So I don't necessarily look at my husband as the nurturer or the caretaker. You're in, in, in my mind, you are the provider. So I feel like it, when it comes to health, when it comes to cooking, like the domesticated stuff, I just see that as my role. And if I'm unable to do that, then, and this is going to have to be like a different panel that I have with women so that we can all kind of join in on it. But I feel like if I'm unable to do that, then I'm failing as a wife, I'm failing as a mother. So when I get a phone call saying my child is sick, don't look at me like that, Ellis. I'm dead. I'm being for real. When I get no, a phone I, call. I, I know. I know. Okay. When I get a I'm phone call saying way. being right. When I get a phone call saying that my child is sick, I'm not looking at it as my husband needs to go take, bring my child back to health or nurse him back to health. I'm looking at it as I'm the nurturer. This is my job. This child granted. Yes, we both created this child, but this child came from inside of me. My role is to nurse this child back to health. Same way, if my husband is sick, my role is to nurse you back to health. It ain't nobody else's role. So, 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 mom, so, so, mom, honey, wife, when you sick, who taking care of you? God, talk. Jesus. No, nah, get out Jesus. of here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 no, 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 get Bernard, 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 because you know what's funny? Oh, the Lord got me. He do. Oh, but you've been every sick. day. No, oh, okay, but you've been sick for three weeks now, and you ain't seen the doctor. Mm. Facts. Mm. But but, Facts. but what happens? God is got you though. Yeah, God got you. Though. Okay. Okay. And I will say that is a extreme flaw. I know I have it. I don't deny it. Y'all, I'm not gonna argue against it. But it is a flaw that we have because, granted, I could be sick as a dog, but I'm gonna make sure that everybody else in my house got everything they need health wise and can carry forth. Okay. And, and, but, but again, now, but as a husband, we love that and respect that. But guess what? It hurts. Somebody got to take care of you. And guess whose job that is? Right here. Right Right here. And it's like, yo, it's okay for you not to be superwoman. Like, you need to be taken care of too. Okay, so here's my question. Here's we're going we're going we go. You guys give me another question. How do you, as fathers, as husband, instill that in your wives, or do you still think it's something you're figuring out how to do? First of all, it's an everyday struggle because y'all are the most hard-headed mm. individuals this Preach. side and that side of the Mississippi. <laughs> um, Talk to them because it's it's the truth of the matter is like. This is, a, I'm glad we're here because this was a topic in our couple's therapy, like straight up, Speak. there are gender norms and, mm -hmm. and old school mentalities and all that other bullshit that I'm like, bro, I'm not here for none of that because I didn't have no parents looking out for me. So I don't have that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So you, you coming in with that, but you're coming in with that via trauma. So mm -hmm. it's not even positive, like situations. You just mm -hmm. hear because you think that's what it's supposed to be. So mm -hmm. it's very hard to break that shit down. And it takes a lot of time, continuous effort and communication as I like to speak up, speak on, but I'm not going to hold you. Like it can be extremely frustrating. And that's why we go get wings, but it can be extremely frustrating. <laughs> we going to get doing, wings and talk about it. Like, you know, short is doing X, Y, and Z. And you're like, bro, you're sick. You don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be doing that. You're going outside. First of all, that's dumb. Like you're doing that. <laughs> like, you what are you doing? Counterproductive shit, and you're making it worse because like, if you're sick and he's sick, who's next? First of all, <laughs> me, know me, I'm coming. like, I'm gonna be next. I gotta take care of y'all. Right. So it's my like, bed is only that big, and y'all both in my bed, wheezing and coughing and going crazy. <laughs> and I'm just like, y'all, I'm not sleeping on the couch. This is my damn house. First of all. So God no. bless you. I'm sleep I, I sleep. I sleep in my son's room with his big bed. Like, hey, all y'all six, <laughs> stay away from me. I gotta go to work. Y'all can stay home. Oh my god. Yeah. But, but, but right. no, but like Rachel, seriously though, because again, like for like for the husbands in the room, it's like, yo, you married us for a reason, not for our good looks and charm. But it's like, don't forget, there's a piece of this where these kids gonna be gone up out the house. Then it's me. There's you, me and you again. Me and you picking up your medications and 
picking up ice cream like dog <laughs> like right like we're here for that so right. it's you guys shouldn't have to feel that you're you're not less than because you can't take care of the family mm. like you need a break too and this is something that I've this is I've tried to tell my wife because she's she's stubborn too because she's a she's a giver. So my wife loves to take care of others. And I'm like, hun, you love taking everybody's baggage. Why? Why? <laughs> like, this is the biggest argument her and I always have. I'm like, you love taking on everybody's baggage, but you never give it back to them. Why? Mm. She's like, you so mean, you so cold hearted. I'm like, no, I'm not. Because you give to everybody else, but when you need something, I start seeing the Facebook post, I'm the only strongest one in the group, but when I need it, I don't get it. I'm like, first of all, do you ask? No. But two, you got too much pride. And three, I'm like, bro, because at the end of the day, guess who's stuck taking care of you? I can't. I got to hear all the complaining, all the X, Y, and Z ain't do, but I'm like, okay. So how, do you want to go just lay down and sleep? No. No. I just wanted to say it. I just wanted to say it out loud. I just want you to sometimes sometimes we just want you to listen, but I'm gonna let Stefan speak. Stefan, uh, how no, 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 no. We, no, we want no, we we want to listen too, but the, but we like, all right, babe, I'm here to listen. Y'all be sitting there just quiet. Be we quiet. are quiet, but I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be quiet and y'all gonna be quiet so we can let Stefan let us know I how he that. instill how he instill his wife to allow him to take control. I think that was the question. Yeah, it's a constant battle. It's 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 a, it's a back and forth type of thing. Like there's never cuz you have life that's going to, you know, pull you in certain ways here left and right. So there's that uh your job, your career that's going to pull you in certain directions left and right. So you have those two things and then you know your kids and everything. So it's never going to always be a 50-50 thing. Um Again, it goes back to the woman and how they feel like they should be with their kids. Mm -hmm. And I think especially that first child uh, also and uh, mothers and, and sons, you know, we have our special connections with our sons, but mothers and sons is something else. It um, is. You know, with kids and everything like that. They carry that child, like Rachel said. So <laughs> it's, it's that constant reminder. I'm here. I I'm here to help. I'm here to help out and help out as much as you can. And sometimes it could be like, I'll just do it. I'm like, you know what? Instead of me having to be like, hey, did he take a bath yet? I'm like, oh, I know he didn't take a bath yet today. Let me go just go give him a shower. I know she's tired and she's been working all day or supermarket needs to be done. She's working. All right, hey, let's go. Put some clothes on. We're going to go take a road trip. We're going to go to the supermarket, get you out the house, get you tired so you can take a nap by the time you, take, you get back home and doing that. Or, hey, we need to cook. There's no food. Right? Am I ordering out or am I cooking? Um, and it's as a man, as a man of the house, it's sometimes having to take that extra step without asking and say, okay, let me just do it. Um, I don't think there's any wife out there. If you just say, let me just step up and do that. That's going to come and yell at you. If they do, I would look at you like you have five heads. Like what the hell's wrong with you? Why are you yelling at me or giving me an attitude for me trying to help out around the house and doing the things without you having to ask. Well, attitude or kind of just like telling you like, oh, baby, that doesn't go there. You should yeah. go somewhere. Oh, no, we get, okay, we okay. That, 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 that's cool. But it's just like, so we can't say that. I just, I'm just taking notes, guys. This is what I'm doing. I'm just taking notes. So don't. Uh, yeah. I hope so. It's going to return because again. Afterwards if, I don't, if we don't need it. <laughs> okay. She's going to lose the notebook anyways, y'all. You know how these women get. They're going to lose the notebook anyway. No, I got it. It's <laughs> in my phone. It's in my phone. Okay, because not because even still, and again, I'm the opposite. If you don't want to listen, I'll be like, "Oh, so you really don't want no help? All right, cool. I'll let you go till you learn your lesson. Treat you like the kids. You're gonna learn one way or another." <laughs> oh. I, I did take Ellis's approach in 2021. I'm not gonna hold you. I did. I did it. I did it very spitefully. I did it very angrily. But you know what? The shit worked. I'm not gonna hold you. Thanks. It did. It worked. <sighs> Yeah, I think the lessons that needed to be learned were learned. I think that exactly what, what he said about the Facebook posts or the being the strongest one or feeling like you're the strongest one and all those stuff or realizing maybe your outside of this house circle isn't as strong as, you know, no not to compare, but maybe at my outside of this house circle. <laughs> Bro, I can't fix that. But if you want to talk about it, I'm here. But if you want to just go on and go crazy and be mega woman, 
You go ahead. You go ahead and do that. I'm gonna play 2K and FIFA. You, you do that. Oh. You, they, but no, thank you, Bernard. Be like, hey, you trying to be like that, and then you complaining about being extra tired. Be like, you've been doing that for three months straight, and you still ain't take a day off. What's wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. All right. Let, let's, Burn off the real thing. Let's let's rewind to the day your child, son, Ellis. I'm gonna go for your firstborn. The day your child was born. Now, when I was pregnant, the one thing I heard from a lot of other mothers was to make sure I let Renard know that he needs to advocate for me. Do you guys, A, regret that you, well, if you did or didn't advocate for your wife, like that moment, your wife's in labor, you can't necessarily take the pain. Because what from what I've learned, was that men struggle with a voicing your emotions and you really can't stand to see your wife in labor and pain because just like, I want to take this pain from her and I'm helpless right now. Um, the one, not necessarily argument, but the one comment I did receive repeatedly from women were, girl, my husband just literally sat in the corner and watched, like didn't do shit, didn't speak. Like, I'm in labor. I'm crying. Like he just shook in a corner and didn't know what to do. Um, I want to hear about how your experience was for labor, like during your wife's labor. I mean, I say labor because, you know, to me, it's a joint effort. Granted, I'm the one feeling all the pain, but you are emotionally kind of feeling my, like you're, you're sympathizing for me. How, how was labor for you guys? Well, for me, my wife got a C-section, so mm -hmm. I got to see her gut get cut open, guts coming out. I was like, ooh, this looks like Mortal Kombat. She was like, hey. she's like, she like, or anesthesia, like, babe, really? I'm like, hey, I'm just saying. Like, you look like one of the zombies in Walking Dead. <laughs> so, like, she was so, she was so through with me. She was like, this is the birth of your daughter. I was like, yeah, I know, but still, like, let, let, let me, let me do this my way, my <laughs> um i really just tried to like say you're doing a great job like i was holding her hand um again we had a c-section so it wasn't a natural birth mm -hmm. so our experience was a little different um the hospital food was good though i can't shout out to Brig that. shout out to brigham's shout out to brigham's that, they, um, the haitians in the kitchen that's why go ahead mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> trust me i know um because i was like who gave me black rice i was like ma'am oh i love you <laughs> she said, babe, what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, all right. No, no more jokes. Um, no. I was really just, just trying to be there and say, babe, you're doing a great job. I'm here. I can mm -hmm. see the baby's head. Um, but again, like as a, as a man, we really, like, we really can't do anything. So even if some of us try to motivate and talk to y'all, like for, one that, the, for the ones that went through natural childbirth, this is where, again, it's out of my purview. Like, I, I can understand that, but it's like, there's really nothing for me to do in this moment, Yeah. but be, but just be here for you. Right. Like, I, it's like, it's how I joke about dads with toddlers and infants. It's like for the dad, especially like, since I had girls first, it's like, I can, I'm useless until these kids get four or five. That's when I really start stepping in. Cause <laughs> that's when I come through. Cause outside of like the breastfeeding, changing and outside of changing and putting the baby to sleep, I, so like, hey, here you go. I can't do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. But again, once a baby hits five, six, seven, oh dad, we out. We doing all of this. We doing all these activities and stuff. And you start to get more active with your child. So Yeah. Yeah. B, how was your how was your labor story? Um, were, were you the silent dad? No, nah, I wasn't silent. I had um I actually warned your husband about this. I warned the whole squad about this, actually, <laughs> because I had a weird situation to which it really has me thinking about what I want to do. Um, I'm I'm very anti the medical field right now. Not medical field, like the, the big industry of medical right mm -hmm. now. So um, we were good. Like, <clears throat> we had an excellent pregnancy. <clears throat> the interesting thing about that is, like, like Alice was talking about earlier, like, people that read all these books, did all this shit or whatever, we didn't take none of them classes. I didn't read none of them damn books. I wasn't doing none of that shit because I was like, I'm black. You didn't you didn't download black. the apps? No, no, no. I did have I had the bump because that was cool because it was like, oh, he's a he's a watermelon, he's a cucumber, he's a blah blah blah. I was like, oh, that's cute. But outside of that, I didn't read them books. I was like, bro, I'm I'm black, I'm from the hood. Like also every single fake doctor around me, aka all the mommies, all the grandmas, all the nanas, 
was just giving me mad wild information. I was just like, you know, I didn't ask for none of this. I don't need none of this, <laughs> but cool. You know what I mean? So I was like, no, nah, I just wanted to personally, I really wanted to experience it because as we talked about earlier, like I don't have yeah. a father yeah, figure. Yeah, look for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't bounce that off nobody. I couldn't be like, yo, what was it like? Outside of like maybe Danny. I did talk to Danny a few times before like the baby came. But yeah. <clears throat> what I did was basically when we got there, I was really observing. I wasn't silent at all. Like we, we talked about a lot of things together and we actually got induced and we tried to do a natural birth, but he was sunny side up. So they ended up really like scare tactics in us into a um, C-section because yeah. Shorty wanted to do it naturally. And I was supporting of her doing it naturally. And now that we know what it is like <clears throat> going forward, we know what to do. That's why, like, we're kind of like, I'm, I'm the one that's being a stickler. I'm trying to figure out how we want to do it going forward, like a natural birth in the pool and the, like yeah. with the, with the lady. I don't know what she's called, but you know, whatever all that stuff. Or whatever. It's a doula. Yeah, she's doula. called a doula. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm debating it because, like, at the end of the day, I am still like, yo, but hospitals are necessary. <clears throat> so, like, the great thing about a hospital is like, your boy had that insurance on deck. You know what I'm saying? They hit us with a corner room suite. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And it was Lydia. You, was you like, must got oh. either Harvard or Blue Cross Blue Shield. You got one of them. You know, I, I had that Blue Cross Blue Shield Platinum at one point. You know what I'm saying? I was out here. I was doing what I had to do. But so I was like, all right, this was needed. But I'm not going to hold you. Like, I, as I told to your husband, like, exactly what Ella said, like, at the beginning, you get humbled real quick. Because the, before the baby is here, you're talking all big, blah, blah, blah. But as soon as the baby is here, you realize you are literally nothing. The only thing I did was change diapers. <laughs> <laughs> and because I have severe insomnia, I would hold my son in my arms, you know, and play 2K or play FIFA or just be up to like five in the morning during my maternity leave so Shorty could sleep. Because if he doesn't feel one of us or whatever, he's going to wake up more for that feeding. Mm -hmm. So that was literally all to change diapers. You know, we went on walks. So getting the moving the stroller, that was all I was doing, bro. It was yeah. Oh, God, the double stroller life was the worst for me. <laughs> the worst. That was it. What that was Stefan, your uh, your labor story. How how was that for you? Well, we actually we had natural birth, so no C section or anything like that. So, um, and our son was a, a very big boy. Um, so we went in thinking like, oh, we're gonna be here for the whole weekend. Um, packed our bags, everything like that. We're like it'll probably take like two to three days for the labor. We go in. Friday, I forgot the day it was. Was it Thursday, Thursday, something like that. But we go in the day and check in. Around midnight, her water broke, and we're like, oh, okay, I guess it's coming. They're like, oh, it'll probably take another 24 hours. Four hours later, they're like, oh, no, uh, the baby's coming right now. <laughs> so my wife, at first, she didn't want to do an epidural. Uh, when the pain started kicking in, uh, she started yelling in Creole. Uh, uh, that the was and I was like, yep, yo. So I've been there. I'm like yelling at the people. I'm like, yo, we need to get her an epidural. Let's get it done now. So the dude tried to apply it. I'll never forget that. It didn't take. So he didn't do it properly. And he's like, no, she's all set. I'm like, bro, she is not all set. I need you to do this over because she's feeling every single pain. It's mm -hmm. like, it takes some time to kick in. I'm like, how long is it supposed to? The nurse is like, oh, about 15, 20 max, by a half hour, she should be numb. I'm like, it's been 45 minutes. I need you to do this over. We try to do it over. And at that time, I'm holding her hand because she has to sit up and, you know, go to the back, find the whole thing. And she's like literally breaking my hand. I'm trying to talk her through it, but it was so much pain. We ended up not even yeah. doing it the second time because it was just too painful. You know, for that whole period of her pushing and all the yelling and all the pain, I had to be there. And I was like, you know, I was blasting music. I was like, yeah, what do you want? Whatever you want, you can do in this room. This is our room. The people were like, turn the music down. I was like, yeah, what the fuck? You no, we ain't turning no music down. <laughs> Blast this music in here. This is what she wants. This is gonna make her comfortable and not think yeah. of the We're walking around the room. I'm holding her hands, you know, blood everywhere, whatever. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was very interesting. Like one of the nurses I remember the, that the helped with the delivery, she's like, Your husband was pretty good. Like most men just like you said, just sit in the corner. I was like, I couldn't see myself just being there. Like, my wife is going through all this pain. I'm just gonna be like, Okay, babe, you got yeah. I couldn't see myself doing that. 
uh, <laughs> that type of thing. <laughs> so I was like, nah, I was in there with her, walking around, holding her. My hand felt crushed for about 24 hours after she twisted my hand in every single direction uh, and angle, uh, you know, but I was there and I yeah. saw the head come out, like guiding her through it, all the different positions, helping yeah. flip her. I, I was like, yo, we did every single position. I've every sports position you've ever been in <laughs> in life. I, I was like, what the hell? I didn't even know some of these positions you were supposed to give birth in, but they were like, no, this is actually good. Let's do it yeah. this way. Let's flip around. Those little, what's that? Uh, the chair, not chair, whatever, the, the bed thing. Yeah. I, this thing could come apart and do all these things and transform in so many different forms like that. So I got to learn <laughs> to learn that. But it, it was it was cool, but it was stressful at the same yeah. time. Um, because again, my son was very big, so she lost a lot of blood. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's happening? Like, stop. And <laughs> there was one point people would just randomly just come in. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, one person comes in, they're like, oh yeah, this is this, this is that. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I think it was close to like 6 a.m. About 10 people just came in the room. Like, well, we're going to do this, 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 this. And I'm like, hey, stop. What's going on? I need y'all to tell me what's happening before you do it. You're mm -hmm. not just going to come in here and just do whatever you want. And then afterwards, shit happens. No. Yeah. What's going on? Y'all need our permission before you can move forward. I don't care if it's going to save. I need to be explained on what's going on. Yeah. That yeah. kind of had to happen a couple of times. And then uh, even post-birth, same thing. Like, they're taking care of my son. So I'm trying to like, oh, son, babe, are you okay? Are you good? You lost a lot of blood. The house of fluids. Oh, she needs fluids. She needs this. She needs that. Yeah. Um, so there was that. Uh, it was a lot. Like, it was, it was definitely overwhelming. Like, right, right. after it happened. It was one of those things. I was like, "Wow, I I really went through that. My wife really went through this." And uh, but then when you look at your kid, you're like, "Okay, it was worth, worth it. it." But yeah, it's that natural birth, man. It's no joke. Yeah. <laughs> I give props to every single woman that gives natural birth. And on top of that, like my wife gave a birth to a big boy. So yeah, that yeah. Was extra. Listen, I'll say this. I said I was gonna have a natural birth. I, I sang that song for the longest time. I said, I'm not going to have no epidural because I had a lot of people was like giving me horror stories with epidurals. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a natural birth. I'm not doing an epidural the minute. Just like you said, the minute labor hit, I was like, nah, I'm good. Where's the drugs? Where is it? She's like, the anesthesiologist is running behind. Go get him and tell him come over here with the drugs because y'all playing with me. Like every time someone came in the room, but what I oh shoot I lost my train of thought wait we're talking about um oh with us we actually so I gave birth in September September 11th and I think that was maybe a month or two after that new that Kevin Hart movie had come out fatherhood so I don't know if anybody saw it spoiler alert uh the wife dies right after giving birth and Wind you, we watched this, and Bernard, you were there with us when we watched it. I want to, I think, I want to say it was like August, so maybe a month before I gave birth. So she died literally like the next day or a day or two after. While it was while she was recovering from childbirth, she dies. And I want to say I can't speak for Bernard. I did want to have him on this episode, but you know, he he has his own life. I can't take over, but. One of the things he did keep in his mind, and we talked about it afterwards, where he, he did keep replaying that part in the movie. So I remember when, you know, I went into labor and my labor actually stalled. I was in labor for 40 hours. I want to say by hour 30, the doctor was like, mm, he's stuck. We're going to have to do a C-section. I didn't want a C-section. Being a black woman, all you hear about is the mortality rate of black women giving birth in hospitals. So of course, that's also playing in our heads, and and has and I know it was playing in Renard's head too. So, you know, I remember after giving birth, going back into the recovering room, and maybe like an hour or two later, Renard's alarm going off, and I just gave her. I'm like, why do why do you have an alarm? Like, who were you trying to wake up for? And he actually set an alarm for. 15 minutes because after you know they were they told Renard hey you go you can go back into the recovery room we're gonna put all her organs back pretty much patch her up and we'll come into the room and they're like we'll be there in 15 minutes 
Renard put a timer on his phone for 15 <laughs> minutes. I love yo, hey, yo, he's he, a jerk. Yo. So when he's I a, so yo, I when him. I came into the room, I was like, why is your alarm going off? He was like, because they said they're going to bring you back in 15 minutes. So if you were not back in this room in 15 minutes, I was I rem- I was going to come get you. You know, it was things like that. And, you know, and Stefan, just like you said, we had one of our, our nurses, the care nurses, because every time someone came into the room and started, because, you know, it's all doctor language. Every time someone said something, you know, neither one of us knew what the word was. Renard's like, hold on one second. What, what was that? How do I spell that? Googling everything on site. So as the mom, you know, we're tired. We just gave birth. We don't really, we're coming off of all these drugs and hormones that have been put into our body to know that he's like the advocate and speaking. That means a lot. So in case your wives didn't tell you guys that, I, I want to thank you on behalf of the wives for being that advocate, because not only being the dad but being a minority and you know being of the stuff on of Haitian descent we're always taught to be to silence our pain you know and I think that's a, a a big part of the mortality rate and the increase in mortality rate in women of color in men of colors because we're taught to not speak when we're in pain um sorry I kind of went on a tangent there um but I do want to before I end that's okay that's okay. Yeah. Because again, just like that part also, like that pulse birth where you guys are still drugged up. That was probably like my favorite part because <laughs> when I got to ball with my I was son, like, what? You want the suities? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, that was my favorite part. Like my wife's over here, she's all drugged up. I'm over here playing with them and the, I got to spend that skin to skin quality, skin to skin time mm-hmm. with them before she got to enjoy because I'm like, I know. When she's back up, she's like, give me my child. Like, I'm like, all right, let me. Oh, no. That's I, my see, baby. I was, a, I, was, I, was a, I was a, see, I got to hold all three of the kids. Well, except our son, because I let her get that one. But the, the girls, I held them first. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I was, oh, I was, oh. I cut the, love. you cut the cord. <laughs> what, oh, yeah. what first thoughts that came into your mind when you held your son? This is my son. Like, oh. Um, after, after I had the white henny out of my system, I, I cried. Um, again, um, having a boy after having two girls. Um, again, I was a little fr- I was a little reckless that day, um, but it was just one of the the proudest moments I could. Every personal accomplishment I had meant nothing. Seeing my son be born, mm. like nothing was changed in that moment. Mm. My girls might feel some type of way about that, but sh- that's okay. That. By the time by the time they hear this podcast, because you know it's 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 an adult podcast, they'll get over it. They'll be fine. They'll know. No, they won't. No, they won't. My girls are petty. <laughs> no, <laughs> I apologize for you. B, first thoughts when you held X. Um, I had a surreal like moment. Um, because we did have the C section, so mm-hmm. I didn't get to like they didn't hand them to me like immediately or whatever, but I heard them. <clears throat> and I, I told you I was doing this too, but I heard him. So I was actually with Shorty at the front of the room or whatever. Yeah. I was at her. I was at her head. You at her head. Yeah. So I heard X come out and he is crying. And they put him on the table, which weirdly looks like the same. It looks like we you know when you go to a restaurant, and they got the fried chicken under the lamp. That's exactly <laughs> what that table looks like. <laughs> yo, so then they was like, yo, <laughs> they was like, yo, you want to come see him? <clears throat> So I get up and I go around you know, and they're chicken like, nugget. Yeah, basically. And they're like, they're like basically like tackling my face because they're like, don't look, don't look, don't look. Cause I guess a lot of men have like squeamish stomachs or whatever. So mm-hmm. they're like, yo, don't look. You don't want to see her guts out, or whatever, whatever. And I was like, Bro. Oh, that was me. That was me. I passed out uh after uh wow, after yeah. my daughter. Yep. I, was, I, I whipped I out. Mean, it didn't really mess with me because I'm like, bro, we just was in the other room and this woman put her whole arm inside of my wife <laughs> and like nothing but blood came out. So I would have been done at that point if it was like squeamish season. But I was like, I don't whatever. But when I got over to X, you know, it was like a whole it's unfortunately our system is surrounded by white people, but <clears throat> it was a whole bunch of white people in the room. The doctors were white, the nurses were white, all that. So when I got over to X, X don't know none of these white people. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I've been talking to X in the belly for the last eight and a half months. You know what I'm saying? So when I got over to him, I, I literally said out loud, I said, Papa Bear. And 
I, saw, I think I said, hey, Papa, or like, you're here, Papa. And he was crying the whole time. And as soon as he heard my voice, he stopped crying. And I put my finger, I did the pinky thing. I put my finger in his hand and he gripped my pinky with his, with his whole hand. And I was just telling him, like, yo, you're here. I got you. Don't even worry about it. And he stopped crying. Like, he literally stopped crying. You about to make me cry. Like, y'all know I'm still kind of postpartum. Like, y'all go, (laughs) Stefan, I said Stefan, be that. that Oh. So that was it. Hold your hand. Oh, man, it'd be a wrap. Be like, oh, I love you, Stink Stink. (laughs) That was it. And then from there, we've been, we've been aces ever since. But that was it. And then honestly, like, I wish I had more, like, of a beautiful moment after that. But honestly, like, Kind of similar to what Stefan was saying, like they got real weird with all the stuff they was doing after that between the the OR and then they had to like test X. And they wanted to give him a binky and give him some some like formula, and I was trying to prevent all that shit. But like our moment was right then and there. Then after that, I had to really get a public air mode to like shut shit down and be like, no, cut it out, whatever, whatever. Because Shorty was out for like a couple of hours after that, like she was done. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm gonna let you finish your thought because you know Alice gets real excited. <laughs> uh, no, it, it was it was an amazing moment. Um, I, I it took a good five minutes for me to realize I because I kept just staring, and in the midst of that, like my wife's being rushed to the OR uh, afterwards, so I'm like, I'm trying to take care of that and make sure she's good. And like you're saying, you know, I've heard all the t- statistics and everything, so I'm really like, okay. What's going on? I need you to explain everything to me. What's happening? Every step, this, this, that. And then they're like, well, your son's right there. I'm like, yeah, he's good. I can hear him screaming. He's good. This, 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 this. And then finally, when everything's done over here, I walked over. You know, <laughs> Underneath the lights, they're doing the test. And same thing. I put my hand out, held his hand, and he just started smiling. Like, And I'm just like, oh, my God, I have a son. I have a kid. This is like... <laughs> Everything that I've dreamt about, how you would look, reaction, everything is like in front of me. And I just, I didn't know how to explain. I was overjoyed, man. I, I sat there, I stood there and just kept staring at him. And they're trying to run tests. And they're like, can we have this kid? And I'm like, what do you need to hold him for? Yeah. Like, we need to run tests on him. We have to check his, you know, hearing and eyesight and all that. And I'm like, okay. And every time they're running the test, that's like the worst part also. Like, I don't know if you mothers had to experience this. Because nope. I'm sitting there and they're like, I'm like, so what, what's the result? They're like, oh yeah, he's good, he's good. I'm like, you gotta say something. You can't just take a test and just look and walk away. No, I need to know the results. They're like, he's good, sir. I'm like, he can hear fine. I'm like, yep. How's his vision? He's he's, he's good. This and that. There was a couple other tests. I forgot what they were, but they kept running all these tests. Yeah. And every single time they wouldn't tell you the results. So after all that came, all the tests came. Um, one, he was too big. So all the clothes that we had brought we were like, oh, nothing can fit him. So we had to go be like, hey, we need some clothes from the hospital. We had to have grandparents bring us extra clothes and bring some clothes from the hospital and put them in his clothes. And I just held them that whole time. So he was with me while my wife is in the OR and I'm just mm-hmm. sitting there with them enjoying that moment. That was like one of the best moments. And that's when, you know, started calling the parents, FaceTiming and grandparents and friends. And yeah. I'm just like, man, like, yeah, I don't think there's any other moment so far in life that can top that. Like, mm. I, I'm like, yeah, the day we got married, this and that, <laughs> everything else. But that moment, that's my yeah. son right there. Man. That's my oh, son. God. Yeah. I, I, I don't have any other words. <laughs> like, I can't explain it. It's, it's an <sighs> amazing, amazing feeling as a dad yeah. to see, see and hold your son for the first time. Yeah, that, that little piece of you. Uh, any, are, we ha- are we having any more children, guys? Yeah, Ellis, Ellis is saying no. Ellis, Ellis is muted, so he just got home. He got a lot of people around him, but Ellis is saying hell no. no. Oh no! Oh no! 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 I, uh, I got snipped. I'm straight. Ain't no more dogs out of me. B, are we looking forward to more children? First of all, you a snitch because I already know what you're about to do. This is going to be telecast to the world. So, <laughs> contrary to what I have been saying more recently. The answer is yes. I'm just building this empire over here. Let me get busy first. Let me do what I got to do first. Okay, Let's finish Nick 2023. Okay. Let's finish 2023 first. And then, yes. 2022 or 2023? We ain't start. We ain't even start 2023. You want to finish it? <laughs> he got Rachel, plans. Um, he got plans. I'm building a house. I cannot, okay. you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not light. So I got you. 
2024 Kobe year. We're coming out strong. I bet. Steph, any more kids in the yes, future? Yes, definitely. I, I've always wanted to have my kids to have. Growing up as an only child, I, I, I need my kids to have a sibling because uh, that is very important. Uh, whether they fight for the rest of their life or they become best friends, which I hope. And I see that in my wife and her brother. They're like, yeah. he's in a pot. So I definitely want to have another kid and uh, hopefully it's a girl. Um, but if it's a boy, hey, I'll take another boy also. I'm not going to lie. I don't mind being a boy, mom. Like, I mean, I love being a woman, but I love like not having to do. Well, I mean, Ramsey's got a shitload of hair, so I'm all I'm still doing hair. You know, I'm still doing hair. But I, I actually enjoy being a boy like he that when he hugs me. It's a whole different world, but I'm I'm not going to hold neither one of y'all. I do appreciate listening to perspective of a father. Um, Cause like I said, being a mom, we, we tend to kind of, and not on purpose, but we block y'all out. You know, we, a lot of women do not give fathers the respect that they deserve. And it's not intentional. It's, kind of just the tunnel vision that we have you know like I stated earlier we we see ourselves as the nurturer we see ourselves as the caretaker of the household we are and we're hard on just like we're hard on you because I know I know your wives are hard on you we are harder on ourselves and where we see ourselves growing our families so um I you know I salute you all for being positive role models in your son's life and it's it's something that we do need a lot more of um, it's something that's not broadcasted enough. So I may have you come back. I might have to do this panel more and get more fathers on, you know, talking about the love of their son because, you know, growing up, it wasn't, it wasn't the thing to see. You're, for those of us who did, I did grow up with, I mean, yes, my parents got a divorce, but my father was very heavily in my life. Um, but being, you know, an immigrant in the country, love was not, hugging love was not affectionate him showing love was i'm providing for you i'm sending you to school you have food on the your refrigerator head. you have a roof over nice. your head you have food on your plate this is how i show love um that might have to be another podcast episode i like that okay i'm gonna have to write that down um but again i do want to thank y'all for for giving me part of your evening chatting with me about fatherhood Getting me excited. Go ahead and call your boy Renat and tell him, you know, go ahead and get number two on the way. We let's coordinate. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> let's, not. Let's co- not nah, that. Ellis, you, you it's not number two for you. It'd be number four for the rest of us people who ain't just no get into four, B. ain't no number four. Ain't <laughs> just <laughs> getting just getting into parenthood. Uh we should coordinate baby number two, have them all at the same year. Co- maybe we should do a Kobe year baby. Oh, <gasps> Oh, that's such a girl thing to say. Pregnancy I know. packs. Oh my goodness! Oh, what are y'all? I know. I'm like, uh, no. I'm, you- I'm gonna go ahead and text your wives. I know. I know they numbers. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, well, thank my you wife's guys. Numbers like, to be like, I know. That's fine. I'll text it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll thank get you. deleted. Thank, thank yeah. you guys. You can't delete me no more. I done saved your number. You are gonna keep me forever. Uh, thank you guys again. Uh, I will have you back, guys back on. I appreciate it. I'm gonna have you drop your handles. Uh, so that people can know how to find you, where to find you, and nope, we're gonna nope. close out. Okay, nope, well, everybody nobody. except for uh, Ellis. Go I, ahead, B. You I too. I just want to point out. First of all, um, I hate social media, so no, I will not be dropping no handles. Um, you can find me outside in the streets. I am the the co chair of community engagement for my firm. If you want to do some volunteer work in the Roxbury, Dorchester area, come talk to me. You can email me. Just talk to Rachel. But I just want to give you credit for doing this because first and foremost, the one disturbing thing I heard the most before I became a father was how much like statistics people had for black fathers, Mm -hmm. which I can't stand because I'm like, I understand that maybe that's what it was like back in the nineties and the eighties and even the early two thousands. But I don't know, no deadbeat fathers. Mm-hmm. Nobody in the squad is a deadbeat father. We don't rock with deadbeat fathers. We ain't messing with that at all. Nothing wrong with being a baby father as long as you're on top of your game. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, some some situations happen. It is what it is. But I want to give you credit for acknowledging that because I think that there's a big misconception about specifically like our millennial-ish generation not being fathers. And I don't get what it is, but it's a misconception for sure. So I appreciate you even doing this. Oh, yeah. thank you. I appreciate it too, because again, 
there's a lot of great fathers out there. And again, it's only the bad ones that get all the media and all the press, but the dads who show up to every recital, every event, every, everything, all we get is the big piece of chicken. And that sometimes that's all we ask for, but no, thank you so much for having us. Uh, me, especially, uh, um, this has been fun. This has been wonderful. Again, I hope this is encourages more black men to be okay with being fathers. It is dope. It is a lot of work. But again, the most rewarding thing is those hugs that you get from those little people. Mm. And again, those can never be replaced. Again, even as they become preteens and start dissing you, <laughs> still. But no, but thank you so when much. It, when it's not having. cool anymore to hug your parents. I know. Like, leave me alone, Dad. <laughs> right? Whatever, Daddy. Like, yeah, it's whatever till that sweet 16 come around and it's like, but Daddy, I want a car. Like, oh, you <laughs> need me now. Okay. My first car was at 22 years old. I feel bad for Ramsey's. Go ahead, Steph. It's a different generation. Different generation. No, it's, it's it's amazing. Thank you, thank you, Shu, uh, for uh, inviting us. Uh, I want to thank both of you guys also for opening up um, because you know a lot of the times, like you hear the statistics, and uh, we're all part of it. So it's good to break that chain mm -hmm. and break that mold. Um, and yeah, no bet, no deadbeats, man. That's me and my circle. That's one of our things that we always say to each other. I'm like, I don't care how long I've known you. If you become a deadbeat, you're going to be a deadbeat to me. Like mm -hmm. we, we say, wow, it, it is not going down like that. We will make sure, uh, you stay in your, uh, your child's life. So thank you for having us. Thank you for this conversation. Uh, it was very amazing. It was good. Uh, and yeah, thank you again. Oh, well, real quick, yeah, you guys all did this to yourselves, but <laughs> by sparking this question in my head, community, because, you know, women always talk about having a village. Did you feel like you had a village becoming a, well, you know, in this process of becoming a father or did you yes. have to build one? Yes, I felt like I had one. You had one. B, you had one. I felt like I had one, but it but just you had to create. You created yours because you were one of the first in your crew to have a son. Well, to have a child. Right? Yeah, I was, but there were other people around me who also had children at the time, so it wasn't awkward. Okay. And so I was lucky. I was kind of both. Like I kind of initiated it, which put pressure on a lot of the girlfriends. Like he's married and got a baby. What are you waiting for? Oh, I remember those times. <laughs> those conversations was funny. I was like, ain't my problem. Mm. Um, but no, um, again, I was fortunate enough to kind of be the the fire, the spark that lit the fire. Mm -hmm. But um, also having some people around to kind of give me some good guidance, some misguidance too. It was fun and it was worth it. Right, right. You know what? And and I have to do this as another podcast. I I don't think like like B and so I, well, technically all the three of you said this isn't advertised enough. It's not portrayed enough. It's not displayed enough that there are positive black men out here uplifting other black men and raising the future generation of black men. So I know you guys were thinking me, but I I think I wouldn't be able to do this podcast episode without men like you in the world. So I think you for being who you are. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. Uh, I thank everybody for listening. Thank you. Go take care I, of your babies. I, Mine's asleep. I'm watching him right now. Oh, my What? <laughs> take care of my baby. They all sleep. I'm going to this Pats game. I'm out of here. Oh, uh, Lord. Oh, I know. I, Stefana, I almost thought you wasn't going to come to I was like, oh, shoot, there's a Pats game. Yeah, but they... Nah, it was playing the corner. <laughs>